Do you want financial freedom? Everybody does. If you truly want financial freedom, you have first got to get financial clarity. And I'm not talking about you need to fully understand money and become a master at investing. You just need to understand what money means to you, how much of it you need to live, and where you want to invest that money. So eventually you have enough money to do with your time what you choose to do. That's really, that's really what it's all about. You want to create a strategy, have a complete understanding, and implement a strategy that allows you to do whatever you want with your time and not be forced to be earning money to live. That is the entire concept of financial freedom. But you need to have the financial clarity to understand how to even get there. And and for me, I'm going to share with you how I actually uh, got my own financial clarity in the most strangest way. You know, at the end of this episode, I'm going to share with you the story that led to me understanding that I didn't even understand money and what led to me even uh, creating my own personal strategy that that got me the ultimate financial freedom and ultimately the the true security to do whatever I want, whenever I want for the rest of my life. And, and it's possible for everybody. And it's something that, you know, it, it's confusing and difficult and most people never even bother trying to tackle it because it is just so confusing and they just look at it as like ah it's money it's just like uh you know i try to save a little but i do want to go on vacation i try to save a little but i do want this purse i try to save a little but i do want this benzo try to save a little but i'm successful now so i should probably get that rolex it's part of life you know what I mean? I mean, look, I don't, I never saved any money all the way up to 40 millions, made millions, spent millions, highly successful, <laughs> highly successful millionaire who had made millions and spent millions in the age old cycle of the poor. The age old cycle of the poor. It doesn't matter if you, you know, make $12 million a year or you make 12,000 a year. If you spend every bit of money that you earn every single year, uh, you both end up in the same place, the same struggle, the same chaos um, on two completely different scales. And think about that. You know, it's most people. You know, we grow up around people that don't know anything about money. And, you know, if you do have a parent that is thinks about money, like, you know, at least in my case, it was really from this idea of paranoia of like, uh, like, you know, you got to save money for a rainy day. Like, uh, you got to save money. So if something happens, you got my, you got to save money. So when you get old and you can't work, that you don't starve to death. Now, it's a very exaggerated version of how Pat Deerdeck approached her finances. Uh, but that's certainly, when I say it like that, that's how it felt when I was growing up and how she would talk about money. And then as I got older, how she would try to push these beliefs onto me um, about money and the people that she would you know, present to me. If like, you've got to talk to this a uh, guy at the bank, he does investments and it's like, you know, um, you know, brand new pro skater, you know, 17 years old looking at this guy just, you know, talking about investing and and using words like compounding and and all these hearing nothing. Hearing nothing. I'm like, great, that's cool, but I'm buying a brand new Honda Civic. <laughs> I just formed a Civic Nation with four of my homies. Guess what? I'm buying a brand new Honda Civic instead of putting money into this, what'd you call it? A mutual fund? No, no. I'm getting a brand new Honda Civic. I'm part of the Civic Nation. Uh, I just didn't, I didn't care. I didn't have the interest. It wasn't even presented to me in some sort of way of like learn it. 
um, understand that that money is this amazing tool and that you can compound it and grow it over time and it can give you um, the freedom to use your time to do whatever you want. And shoot, you save enough of it, you could buy all the Honda Civics you want. Of course, I did grow out of that. I did grow out of that. But it was the that sort of mentality and how I was raised almost made me against it. So then what would I do? I would just make money and buy things and invest money in this thing and try this thing. I just had no concept of how money worked. And I just never bothered to learn, didn't want to understand it. It was too overwhelming. Like, it was so confusing. Like, I just never looked at it through the lens of, like, all the value that comes along with with learning money and learning a single strategy that's the right fit for you until I was, you know, nearly 40. Until I was nearly 40. And it's it's it kept me in this continuous cycle of, you know, working harder and harder, making more money, having great success, but not knowing what to do with it, putting it in all these wrong places, not understanding the tax liabilities and um, how risky a lot of the stuff I was investing was in and just always looking at like what was going to be the outcome. I was just going to be so rich then I would hire somebody to figure it all out for me. And it just drove me all the way back to zero. All the way back to zero. Starting over. Just living in the cycle of the poor. Cycle of the poor. That's it. You know what I mean? And it's like you you spend everything that you earn because you just don't even understand the concept of how you would even use money to get you to a place of security and freedom. Because we only know the construct through retirement and ultimately like, you know, get a 401k, you know, and when you're 65, 70, you and Marguerite can head out to the old pond and go fishing for bluegill all day, all day, no more going to work. Uh, and even though I, obviously um, the scene that I just set for you makes no sense, it doesn't even make any sense to me. <laughs> it's obviously, it's like my grandparents, probably their vision of what they really truly wish they could do as opposed to any modern person, including including myself. But, you know, it's this idea that you have to, you know, really define what money means to you, right? So when you think about, okay, I want to get financial clarity. What do I need to do to get financial clarity? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to define what money means to you. And and that's like, what do you want to do with money? And it always boils back down to lifestyle. Like what type of life do you want to live? What way of living and lifestyle do you envision for yourself? That becomes the baseline. That is the baseline of the amount of money that you have to eventually earn, the amount of money you have to save and invest in this, and the size of the money that you need to grow it to so that you can maintain that lifestyle. You need to define that specifically first above all and lock in with like, if I had this much money every year to do this um to live in this house, to have this car, to to do this type of vacation, whatever whatever that is, defining that once and for all and building a strategy against that is the first step. It's the very first step. And, and most people just sort of incrementally spend more if they make more and don't, you know, put a little away for a rainy day. You know, a lot of people try to focus on wanting to buy a house, you know. But it's if you just understand how much you spend and lock in on that, that is step one in financial clarity. Why do you want money? What type of lifestyle do you want? And how much does it cost to live? That's step one. That's step one. You lock in on that and you now have the baseline of of the type of money you need to earn, save, and ultimately invest in, in order to get to a point where you have that money to live that lifestyle for the rest of your life. That is financial freedom. Where that definition of the way that you live and and how you would spend money and then creating a a strategy to be able to to have that money and not have to go out and work for it and use your time to get it, that's the baseline. 
That's the baseline. And now the second one is the tricky one. So most people could get to that, and it's really easy. But the tricky one is like, okay, where do I invest it? And investing and money, oh, it's so hard. And it's you don't have to figure out everything there is about money. You only have to figure out one strategy. But that one strategy, you have got to just dedicate the time to understanding and learning and, and devote enough of your mind share to gaining an understanding so that you're not just creating a strategy that you don't understand and just hope that it works. That's all you have to do is pick one strategy. Is it a real estate strategy? Is it a, a mutual fund strategy? Is it an index fund strategy? Is it a bond strategy? All of these different strategies, you know, is it all weather portfolio like Ray Dalio, all these things. And I know I just made you sad and confused you and sent you right back into a place of like, money's too confusing. I'm out here just wah, wah, walking you right now. But it doesn't matter. One of those you've just got to like talk to somebody and make a decision on just one. And then that informs your understanding of like, okay, great. Now I've learned that if I invest in an indexed fund, that it will grow 7 to 10% uh, every single year um, and occasionally uh, be down in cycles. But on average, it will be in a 7 to 10% range and I'll be doubling whatever I have invested every 7 to 10 years. It's, just, it's, it's something that you understand so completely and, and easily understand it. And then you just begin to implement it. Let's just say it is that strategy. Man, when you have, and, and maybe your goal is you've got to get to a, a, a few million dollars, you know, whatever it may be, the, the moment you start it, the moment you start it and then you begin to see it grow and you know like, man, I'm now, you know, I'm like 15 years away. Oh, then you have a, a new job in a bigger year. Now you're, you're, you're 10 years away. You know, it's like the energy that comes along with it. And I can tell you when you reach it and you reach it like um, way faster than you realized and like because you defined what your money meant to you and what your lifestyle needs are. And then you created an investment strategy uh, to grow your money to the size that you no longer need to be responsible for earning money, that you can live off the money that you've created. When you begin to see that come alive, it motivates you to spend less and invest more. When you look at a new job and here's this uh, way more money that you could make, you don't look at it as like, oh, man, now I can go and get the 6 Series BMW. You're like, man, look at how much more I can put into the system that will get me there now instead of 15 years. I'm six years away. That's the type of like financial clarity that you need if you want to get to a place where you grow your money to where your money now allows you to live the lifestyle that you want to live instead of you putting in hours and working allow you to live the lifestyle you want to live. That is financial clarity. And, it, and it's not overly complex. You know, it is not overly complex. For you to find financial clarity in your life, you must define exactly the lifestyle that you want to live and how much it will cost then you design a simple investment strategy that you fully understand and then set a goal that gets you to a place where you can now live off of your money instead of working for your money. And that is your system and that is your financial clarity that you completely understand that you can now implement and grow into and eventually get to a place where you now get to do whatever you want with your time. That is what having financial clarity can do to lead you to financial freedom. And look, for me, you know, I often joke I didn't even know about money um, until I realized I didn't know anything about money. 
and for me, as I was really starting to shape my life and turn, uh, begin to look at things um, from a more strategic and holistic way, out of nowhere, you know, I get a call from Tony Robbins. And it's like, what? Tony Robbins? I, you got Keep in mind, at this point, I didn't even really know anything about Tony Robbins. And, and the only reason I was excited, because my girlfriend at the time was super into personal development who, of course, would go on to be my wife and change my life forever. I was just trying to impress her. And he wanted me to promote Money Master the Game to his audience. And then when he showed up, I was really, you know, Tony Robbins was just showing up so that I could impress this girl that I knew I was meant to marry. Only he presented me with the book Money Master the Game, which then made me realize I don't even know anything about money. What is money? And, and, and that book changed my entire life and my entire perspective. And then, you know, the strategy that I was trying to find for myself because I wanted a super easy, super simple strategy. Because I, I did not want to go through having all these different brokers and all these different... So I just wanted one thing that I fully understood and that... that you know, fit well into the way that I lived. And that was, you know, I earned money um, through my personal brand and television. And then I had these high risk ventures. And Tony Robbins introduced me to a gentleman that, that he had worked with to manage a lot of his money who introduced me to multifamily real estate. That's how it was even presented to me. And because I had laid out, here's my vision for my life and here's how I earn money and here's the high risk venture side. We talked through until we landed on this real estate side of like, hey, this is super secure. It's tax efficient, creates cash flow. So eventually you will get to a place where, you know, it doesn't matter if your TV goes away, or your ventures don't work. You can, you know, live off of the money that you earn from the cash flows from your building. It was this super easy to understand strategy for me. And that was it. You know, I, I always kept a, a cash reserve and every bit of extra money I had, I put into buildings. And, and that was it. And then when I finally grew to a place where the cash flow of those buildings um, was larger than the lifestyle that I needed to 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 live the money I needed to live the lifestyle, man, absolute and complete freedom ever since, which really just allowed me to, you know, be more efficient in all aspects of my life, gave me that much more security to take bigger risk and have bigger wins and live a compounded life even further. But I started that at zero, at zero. And what I thought would take a lifetime to reach to get to the level of financial freedom that I have, I did it in like a few short years. And it's just because I developed the strategy. After spending all of my life of earning money and going back to even over and over again, I finally designed the strategy and grew into it. And it finally the financial clarity that led to the financial freedom that I have today. And I just think, you know, to everybody, it'll always be something that you think about, worry about, wonder about. And, and it's not that difficult. Lock in on what you need. Lock in on a simple strategy you understand. And then, then do everything you can to realize that strategy because it gives you so much more than just security. It, it really gives you so much more peace of mind and harmony in the whole. And it is worth putting in the effort to create that strategy, getting that financial clarity, and eventually growing to financial freedom. But you know what it is. You know, you got you to gotta look out into the future and, and realize it's even possible. You got to create the strategy for it to even become a thing so you believe it. And you got to give it everything that you have to realize it. Until next time, see it, believe it, do it.